The transfer deadline day is always a busy time for clubs up and down the country. From your point of view, what does this week look like for you? Um, a normal week for us. Um, I suppose we're in a position where you end up, or, or no, you don't end up, you are bottom of the food chain in terms of players being filtered down. You want to try and get your work done as quickly as possible, but it always tends to go to the last day or pretty close to the last day for for whatever, for whatever reason. Um, as teams higher up get their work done or get people in, that then allows things to come out. So things often crop up last minute that you don't expect. Um, but yeah, I don't expect today to be a a busy or a late day for us. Uh, I think we're pretty much done uh, and happy with where we are. Yeah, I suppose, as you say, still a few hours left in the window as we speak now, but if it is to, to finish as it is, how, how would you rate County's transfer window? I think we'll finish where it is. Um, how would I rate it? I'm, I'm comfortable and happy with, with where we're at. There was, there, was, there was things that have gone on since the start of January. We've missed out on, on certain things. We've missed out on a lot of things and we've been spinning a lot of plates, but... Um, it it was a case from our, from our side of things is for every week that passed, a player became closer to fitness. So you have to re ask yourself the question as to whether you really needed to, to do anything. Um, there was certain areas of the pitch where we've got more injuries than than other areas, um, and you need to make sure, like I say, the window will shut in five hours or whatever, six hours, um, and you need to be comfortable and sure that you've got enough um, and covered eventualities to see you through to the end of the season and not um, affect the chances that you have. I think we've done that. Um, we've done it based around the most pessimistic view of, of, of things, um, but optimistically we hope that we don't have the reoccurrence of injuries that we've had and if we take this squad, certainly when, when we get to probably the start of March fully fit, um, then we're in a really good place. One player that has come in today has been Lewis Cass, a player you know well from your, your time together at Hartlepool. And I suppose given the situation with, with Kyle and all, that was a deal that, that made sense all round. Yeah, that was the, if you look at that was the one area where we haven't got natural cover, that, that right side. Um, be it as a, a right back, a right wing back, Cass can play as a, a right sided centre back in, in a three. Um, like you say, someone that I know. I know well from my time. Um, no, he'll fit into the group really well. He's a, a great lad. Um, he's local, um, so no up sticks in terms of relocation and things like that. He's been part of two promotion winning sides in the last three years. Um, and his versatility, but most importantly, like I say, what, he, what he's like as a, as a character and a personality is, is massively important and will be a, a great addition to the group. Just on Noily, I know you said previously he was due to see a specialist at the end of the month. Do we know anything more about his situation? Yeah, a bit of a frustrating one for him because um, you'll have seen if there's pictures being taken, him out training today and, and being back with the, with the group. And um, unfortunately for him, he'll be able to do everything bar head the ball. Um, so he'll be conjoining the warm ups, passing drills, possession areas, all patterns of play, crossing and finishing, and providing he's doing the crossing. Um, but won't be able to do small sided games and 11v11 stuff and that's certainly going to be for, we, we think at a maximum three months, um, so that'll rule them out for the rest of the season, but it'll be scanned every six weeks just to check where, where things are. Um, but I suppose what it does allow them to do is, is be able to, to carry on playing football, just unfortunately from our perspective and his, his perspective, not competitively. Keeping to injuries, obviously no Kyle Wotton uh, last weekend. Is that anything to be, to be concerned about in the long run for Wots? I'd hope not uh, in the long run. Um, like I say, a, a, a minor muscle problem, um, which we, we've we looked back on and it's hard to, to point your finger at things. Listen, the game was called off at the, at the weekend. Um, we're really lucky in the fact that we have frost covers here and can pretty much train on the grass um, every day. Um, the previous week, the Thursday, Friday, because of the temperature dropping to minus seven, we had to train on on three G. Has that had an impact? And what's has just felt something on the on the Monday when we've trained and that changed the surface, has changed things. So we have to look at everything. We have to deal with it. Um, it's not a significant one, and I don't think he'll be available this weekend. But I would hope that he'll be available for possibly next weekend, um, and certainly if not next weekend, then the crew game on the, on the Tuesday, the, the following Tuesday. Um, so a short term one, um, but thankfully not missed at the, at the week last weekend. And the quicker we can get 
him back and, and Will shouldn't be um, too far away in terms of his injury. It obviously adds to the group and only makes us stronger. I was going to say, it's, it's testament to the development of, of your side, really. Obviously, losing Watts last season was a, a real blow and, and difficult to adapt without him. But on Saturday, you go to Doncaster, away from home, you score five goals and, and Paddy and Tanto get three between them. Yeah, we, 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 tried, to, we tried to evolve through the, through the summer in terms of uh, personnel that we brought in. But in the main, that wasn't too much of a different side than, than what, we, what we had last year. It's been, like I said, been a, been a few additions. Um, we had to again look at look at different ways of playing, but fundamentally we want everyone available to give us the give I said give us the different the different options. Um, Saturday we performed really well, um, started the game really well, put ourselves on the front foot and and, and grew from there. Um, and it's just to go away from home with with the players we got missing and um, and be able to win win five one. Um, was a really, really pleasing result. Um, we need to carry on doing that, whilst hopefully, like I say, week by week, getting stronger with, with players coming back and making it more difficult from, from our perspective as a management team to um, pick a squad of, or pick a team of 11, pick a squad of 18 and, and keep everybody happy. In all the excitement of last week, it, it maybe went under the radar a little bit that you had Sars back on the bench, you were able to give him 20 minutes, second time this season, now he's returned ahead of schedule. Uh, from injury and, and you know, without stating the obvious, that's, that's such a big boost for you. Huge boost. Um, like I said, Maka being back a, a huge boost. Miles being back in the squad is, is exactly the same. So is Sars. Um, we'll, we'll come into this bit and people might call it the running. The running of, of 18 games. It's quite a long running. Um, it's nearly nearly half a season. Um, so, But you do need your experienced players and your, your players that have experienced promotions and have dealt with promotions before and 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 they then really come to the fore and, and sort of stand out and uh, and step forward so again from our side of things we've had a great run we're in a brilliant position um but to have the players we've mentioned there coming back and other ones not too far behind them can only be a huge huge positive to to the whole group and, the, and this whole place um and fingers crossed we can keep them fit till the end of the season if we do that then I think we have a real good opportunity. Returning to this weekend, you've obviously come up against Harrogate and Simon many times in your career, from the National League North right through to, to League Two. When you look at them now, six wins from the last eight, one of the best away records in League Two, is this the best Harrogate uh, side that you've faced? Um, I suppose to statistically you'd say it would be because um, they're doing it at the highest level that they've done it before and they're probably the highest position they've been as a, as a football club. But I think you go over their teams from, even when they were, like I say, National League North days, you knew what they were going to be. They've not changed massively. Um, they've still got personnel from that time. I know, speaking to Weaves and, and Thurls, they felt that they had to evolve in terms of what they were as a, as a club. and. They had that group together for an awful long time and it brought them success in terms of becoming a football league team and, and, and took them to a level. They had a, a bit of a, a bit of a scare um, last season and I suppose coming to this season there have been people predicting that they wouldn't be where they were in the, in the table and they've, like I said, they, they've have evolved, they've found a different way of playing, um, be that at home or away, they've been a little bit more, a little bit more counter attacky, a little bit more transitional in terms of having players that can hurt you 1v1 and can affect the game uh, in transitional moments, um, whilst then allowing them to be compact and, and sort of a little bit deeper and, and, and protect and defend um, in, a, in a more compact shape. So they've had a, a brilliant run to put themselves in a, in a great position um, and they found a way of winning. So we know that um, Saturday will be a, be a test. It, it'll be I imagine and I would expect that it will be similar to the pattern of the game at, at Harrogate um, where initially they will come with a, a thought process of go on then try and try and break us down and um, I think we know going into the game that they'll be at their highest strength if you like when we've got the ball so we've got to make sure that we're good in possession um, we cause them real problems but we're also organized in possession um, behind the ball if you like to make sure there isn't them transitional moments and turnovers which they've um, caused significant threat from over the last sort of yeah 10-15 games 
in the last home game, you, you really called on the, the county fans to create a, a siege mentality for the game against Walsall. And you definitely got a reaction off the back of that. How big a role do they have to play? Eight home games left this season. How big a role do they have to play in the running? They'll always play a huge role. We, I think, like you say, statistically, Harrogate have got their maybe best away record in the league. We're potentially got the second best, or we can overtake them in terms of our away record. But your success is always going to be, I suppose, judged on your, your home record. Um, yes, you've got to be good away from home, but you've got to be very good at home and pick up the majority of your points at home. So that's always going to be a, a test for us and where, where we should feel the most comfortable and where we should feel at home and we have to use that as as an advantage and there'll be different challenges for us so you go into the, our last home game against against Walsall um, they come into it on the back of going to Grimsby and, and, and winning 6-1 but probably going to Grimsby and winning 6-1 and without this sound the wrong way tr trying to win the game in a different way so trying uh, to be aggressive and be on the slightly more on the front foot they came to us and were more more reserved and and got behind the ball and, and, and tried to frustrate. Well, when that's the game, then you've got to be good and you've got to try and get that first goal. And that maybe changes the, the dynamic of what the game looks like. I, I don't think Saturday is going to be going to be any any different. Um, so at times we're going to have to be be patient. Um, we're going to have to be, like I say, switched on um, in possession. Um, and I mean defenders switched on, um, organised to make sure that we can attack, but we can sustain attacks. Now, that will be, maybe from a supporter's perspective, a challenge that they may become accustomed to it, allegedly over the past sort of 18 months. Um, it's probably gonna be another one of those uh, those occasions. Will there be frustration? There potentially might be. We've gotta make sure we do everything we can to overcome that frustration by being positive, being aggressive, being on the front foot, and trying to score, trying to score early and, and, and change any game plan that Harrogate might have coming into the, into the game. Um, the game, as with all the games from now on, might go a little bit deeper, and we might have to be a little bit more more um, more patient. We can't get frustrated, and that's an easy one for us to say. Um, but from a supporters' perspective, that might be exactly what it what it looks like. Regardless of who you play against and where it's at, you've got to find ways of winning, um, and it doesn't become well, it's no more important than what it is now and will be for the next. 17 games after that so um, we've always said there'll be a ups and downs it'll be a roller coaster you have to embrace the position we're in um, now's the the real time to to kick on we've played two-thirds of the season got ourselves into a, a fantastic position we now need to go and finish that off appreciate your time babe thank you welcome cheers thank you